<clears throat> Today will, I am going to speak about introduction to communication station. This is a simple lecture about the introduction of communication station. And after that, in the next lectures and meeting, I will speak about the pathway of each cases maybe you will encounter in the exam. Let us first to agree the ethics and the communication station as the name implies is designed to test the candid understanding of the core concepts of medical ethics. The ability to discuss about a disease condition and the way the communication is carried out with patient, caregiver or relative or colleagues. You must make sure that the interview is carried out in plain language that is easily understandable by non-medical person and to avoid any medical jargon. Communication station, it is very easy to pass and get a clear pass in this station, provided that you have taken a time to study the core concepts of communications and ethics. The mistake that candidates commonly make is to read a lot of books without developing any basic understanding of the medical ethics and law. If you are aware of your duties and ethical principle, you should be able to deal with any situation. For this, you don't have to read big box on the subject, rather you will be provided with a concise outline of core concepts which should sufficient for most scenarios that are encountered in the examination. First of all, to bus communication station you have to know the four scales in these stations and how your performance have been assessed in the communication station. It is the most important issue to know what is the item you have to cover it in this station and you have to fill these items during encounter the case in the exam. As of, 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 as of we know as we know that we have in this station four skills clinical communication skills managing managing the patient concern clinical judgment and managing the patient welfare each skills from these four skills has a parameter you have to cover it clearly and you have to know what is wrong and what is the right in each skills. First skill, clinical communication skills. What does that mean? First, you have to explain clinical information to the patient. As we said, clear, to uh, maybe uh, uh, clear and avoid medical jargon should be structured and comprehensive in a professional manner. That is mean clinical communication skills to explain everything for the patient, accurate information and the clear information in non-medical term, comprehensive and in professional way. The problem here if the candidate didn't give clear information for the patient. This is a problem. Or the candidate use medical jargons. Jargons means that 
medical terms or the candid his way is not professional or unpractical this is the first skills clinical communication skills second skills here managing the patient concern in this skills we have three items number one to answer the patient concern Number two, confirm the patient understanding. Number three, to become sympathy and empathy with the patient. So that we in this skills we have in this skills we have three items again, to answer the patient concern. Number two, to be sympathy with the patient. Number three, to confirm the confirm. Acknowledging and understanding of the patient. The problem if you forget to answer concern, if your way of dealing with the patient is not in sympathy or empathy way, or you forget to check understanding for the patient. Skill number three: clinical judgment. It is mean. It means that you have to select. Proper management plan for the patient, for his case. Is number one. Number two, to apply your clinical knowledge, including ethics and the law. Clinical judgment has two items. First items, first item is to explain the management plan for the patient. Number two. To apply clinical knowledge, including ethics and the law. The problem here, if you forget to apply your clinical and ethical issue, or you didn't explain management plan in proper way. Last item is, uh, last skill is managing the patient welfare. It means. You have to treat your patient respectfully and sensitively, and ensure the patient is safely and in and dignity during the discussion. And avoid any physical or emotional discomfort to the patient. So we have four skills. Each skills have item, and each items should be. Complete during discussion. This is how your performance assessed in communication station. We have common cases in bases, and each case have a bus way different from other case. So in future or in the coming. Lectures. I will explain the best way for each item. Common cases here: breaking bad news could be curable or non-curable cancer or chronic progressive disease. Maybe explain new diagnosis for the patient: chronic illness or acute illness. Maybe counseling the patient about chronic illness. About the management plan, dealing with angry patient or relatives, discussion the diagnosis with relative, discussion procedure with patient or relative, DNR with holding medical treatment, long term care for patient. This patient is candid for ventilation or not, and also organ donation. At the same time, we have common case post mortem examination, hospital post mortem, or refer to the coroner, genetic test, one of the famous case in the exam, HIV test, needle stick injury, deliberate self harm, any medical problem with pregnancy like pulmonary embolism, epilepsy, hocum, prepartum cardiomyopathy. 
tuberculosis, cyrotoxicosis, and hypothyroidism. Any infectious or notifiable disease like HIV, meningitis, and chickenpox, tuberculosis also. I, in general, all, uh, for communication, we have some rules and some issue we have to cover it. Each scenario have medical issue to, t to know how is your medical knowledge to, gov to cover it in the clinical judgment or ethical issue or legal issues or social issues related to patient job or public issues related to other person sharing condition with the patient. At least you have ethical, medical and legal issues. Sometimes maybe social issues and the public issues and I will mention that in the next slides. What is the ethical issue in communication? We have main ethical issue. First one is called autonomy. What does that mean? Autonomy, you have to respect the patient wishes and decisions. If the patient decides he doesn't agree about your medical treatment and the patient is have capacity, we have to agree about that and we have to respect the patient wishes. If the patient refuse any medical treatment and you feel that it is unwise decision for the patient and this patient has full capacity to take his decision, we have to respect. Autonomy, like consent, like charge against medical advice and refusal of treatment. That is right of the patient. Provided that this patient has capacity Number two, doing the best for the patient. Patient best interest. It usually occurs if patient doesn't have capacity and they can discuss the patient condition with his relative. Assume that no advanced directive. Patient wishes and best interest for the patient it is one of the most ethical dilemma in the communication station. You are explaining to one relative of the patient his condition, he has subdural hematoma and this patient is candid now for urgent surgery to evacuate this hematoma. But his relative doesn't like to do for him, doesn't agree about the procedure. But you as a doctor and the team looking after for patient, the best interest for this patient to doing the surgery. And there is no advanced directive written by the patient that he doesn't need the surgery. So we have to do the best interest for this patient. Actually in the exam, it is, uh, don't make a confrontation with the patient or relative, uh, sorry, don't make confrontation with relative and you have to make step by step to explain to him the benefit of the procedure and that the best interest for the patient and it is urgent procedure. So best interest for the patient, it usually occurs if the patient doesn't have capacity and the candid discuss the patient condition with his relative. Again, assume that there is no advanced directive or last bar attorney. Number three, avoid the harm of patient, even if we are if we are unable to do good. It usually occur when the relative want to do for the patient something against clinical decision. This is avoid the harm. Sometimes relative want to do for the patient any decision and the medical team looking after for the patient doesn't agree about that. So we have to respect the decision of the medical team. There is a rule, the ba no patient or family doesn't have right to decide 
what is the management plan for him, for patient or for relative. The uh, patient have the right to refuse the management plan, but doesn't have the right to choose the management plan. Number four, justice. It means treat all patients equally, also avoid discrimination and abuse. In the exam, maybe you face one patient old age, and the decision this patient is not candid for resuscitation. And you are going to discuss the condition with the patient, uh, with the relative, and his son or his caregiver told you that, Doctor, you, ta you take this decision because my father is old, so that your answer should be like that. We have treat all patients equally, there is no any discrimination, and the decision is depend on the guidelines that we are follow it, and these guidelines approved by National Health Service. Number five, preach your confidentiality, and I will speak in the next lectures about it. And the capacity, we have to decide this patient has capacity or not, and I will explain in the next lectures. Public issue. Some diseases could be affect the public, could be affect other people, so that driving is very, very important if you face the any patient with diabetes, epilepsy, transient ischemic attack, stroke, heart disease, you have to raise the issue of driving. Maybe this bus driver, so that there is a guideline, and there is DVLA guideline according to each case, and like diabetes, epilepsy, there is guidelines, this patient candidate for drive or not, the license should be given to him or not, he has to inform DVLA or not, these guidelines, all of us have to read it carefully. Infectious and notifiable disease. Notifiable disease means we have to inform National Health Service about it, like meningitis, tuberculosis, it is very important. And also for the patient, for uh, some uh, disease could be transmitted to other people, like tuberculosis, isolation or not isolation. I will speak later in the case of tuberculosis about it. HIV, informal partner or not, it is very important. Meningitis, we have to trace the contact. Like TB also, we have to trace the contact. Hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus. Inform his partner or not. Very, very important. This issue is HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. We have to raise the issue of partner and to inform them and to try to convince the patient to inform his partner. And please, again, don't to go in confrontation with the patient. If he doesn't agree to inform his partner at the time being, you have to inform him. At this time, please, you can use a barrier during intimate relationship. And after a couple of weeks, we can sit again. You will think in this issue. And you imagine that your partner know in the future, will know in the future you have a medical problem and you hold this information with his hair maybe she will feel frustrated from your decision. Decision. So HIV, I will speak later about it in details, about <coughs> confidentiality and when we are going to breach the confidentiality. Medical legal issue. One of the most ethical dilemma also, medical legal issue, like breach of confidentiality, when we have to breach your confidentiality, patient candidate for resuscitation or not, 
post-mortem examination, refer to coroner or hospital post-mortem examination, organ donation and donation card, advertisement directive or and living well, withhold the treatment for this patient, end of life care asked by a relative, it's called euthanasia, all of this medical legal aspect. Social issue. Actually, there is no one written that as a separate issue, but I emphasized about it. Why? Because it is one of the most important issue. Always we forget it during discussion. Job. It is very important to ask the patient about his job or relative about the job of the patient. It's a vital if you forget it. Why? Because the job could be the cause of his illness. So that this patient is candid for compensation. Could be the job is a risk for the patient, like if the patient is epilepsy and he's a driver. This is a guideline for that. So that job is one of the most important social issues we have to raise it with the patient. Smoking and alcohol intake. We have to ask the patient about smoking and alcohol intake. Maybe you put in your mind there is no relation to smoking and alcohol. But I will give you an example. If the patient is tuberculosis and you were giving him rivampicin and isonamide, isonamide, so that this patient is heavy alcohol intake so that his liver function could be affected by alcohol and the drug. Patient is bronchial asthma. You have to ask about smoking. It's called pre-morbid state for the patient. Marital status or sexual partner. Some scenario which is a vital, like HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, if he is planning to be married, like if you are going to discuss hypothyroidism with the patient and she is not married now, but maybe planning to be married and get baby in the future. So that you have to tell her that pre natal care, the patient should her thyroid function normal. And once she get pregnant, she has to increase the dose by 20 to 50 microgram because her Fetus is depend in the thyroid, hair thyroid. Maybe when you are going to discuss the hypothyroidism, you forget this. No relation. Why I will ask here about marital status? Thyrotoxicosis is the same. If you are going to discuss thyrotoxicosis with the patient, very vital. Are you planning to be pregnant soon? Why? Probably your seal in the first trimester is candid for this patient. And carbamazole after that. Who is taking care of the patient? Some scenario have patient in you diagnosed as stroke. And this patient is taking care of his wife. And his wife is, has rheumatoid arthritis. And she has a lot of deformity. And she is wheelchair dependent. So you have to tell the patient, ask him in short, not in details. Who is taking your care? In whom? Are you or... or if he is taking care of other person in the home. If he is taking care of other person and he has medical problem interfere with that, we'll tell him, I will refer this issue to social worker. She will arrange that for you and she will help you a lot in this issue. Again, social issue, it is a vital. Job, smoking, alcohol intake, pre-morbid state, marital status and sexual partner, who is taking care of patient or if the patient is taking care of other person in the home. This ethical issue, medical issue, and public issue, also social issue. We discussed it. Now, I am going to make a busway. This busway will be for all cases. To put a plan, also would modify something according to each scenario. 
imagine yourself now you are going to exam in communication station you have five minutes waiting outside the room and you have 14 minutes inside the room with the exam, exam with the patient and one minute for reflection how can I arrange my time five minutes before station once you sit they will provide for you paper contains the scenario if you don't have plan paper request it from the organizer please doctor I want plan paper read your task carefully in two minutes read carefully read your rule and your job and the patient name and read also what is your task in two minutes you have to decide what is the main medical issue ethical issue social issue legal issue and public interest you have to write the patient name one of the most common mistake as we usually during preparation before exam we choose three to four names maybe we because we usually use it you forget the actual name that given to us in the during exam and you by wrong call the patient by another name so you have to write the patient name you have to write your job what's your job you are a senior house officer or you are a registrar what is the, your, your, your job you are a medical doctor or cardiology doctor so that it is very important during discussion with the patient to tell him what is your job five minutes Two minutes read your task one minute you have to write your job your name is patient name and your task three minutes remaining two minutes in this five minutes you have to divide the paper to three parts introduction main task and the end of discussion actually during this during your preparation for exam do it it will be habit for you after that and you maybe you didn't need to write all of this during exam now you are going to discuss the condition with patient conversation with the patient Communication is hearing what is not said. Again, communication is hearing what is not said. You have 14 minutes inside the room with the patient. As I told you, we have three items. Introduction, main task and concern, and end of discussion introduction one to two minutes to introduce yourself and will speak about the item of this introduction main task concern two minutes end of discussions two minutes we have five to six items in introduction Four items, it is the same in all. You have to greet the patient according to the time of exam. If you are going to exam in the morning, you tell him good morning. In the evening, you will inform him good evening. Good afternoon in afternoon. Introduce yourself by telling him your name and your role. You have you have to identify your patient carefully by calling him by his name number four each meeting or every meeting we have to confirm agenda of the meeting or interview and take a consent from the patient it is verbal consent four items it is the same in all station 
in all scenarios sorry if we if you are speaking to a relative ask him if he is the next thing of kin or no why to avoid breach of confidentiality actually if you are going to exam and speak with a relative be sure that he is the next of kin but you we have to ask him sometime it is written in the exam paper assume that the patient's son has a consent from his father to discuss the condition of you, with you. So that it is written already. If not written, and the patient is conscious, we have to ask him, are you next of kin? Are you have a, do you have a permission from your father to discuss the condition of me? If he is conscious, but if his father is not conscious, and he know any not written in the paper that he has a consent from his father to take uh, to speak with you and his patient is not conscious just only ask him if it's next of can or not if we are going to break bad news we have to ask the patient or relative do you want any one of your family to attend this meeting or no so that we have six items the six items in introduction we have to cover it number one greet the patient introduce yourself identify the patient confirm the agenda if you are speaking to a relative ask him if he is next if can or no number six if we are going to breaking bad news of patient we have to ask do you want anyone of your relative to attend this meeting or not I would give an example now for this introduction Assume that we have patient has chest pain and already we did for request for him CT pulmonary angio and we found that he has pulmonary embolism. And the patient written in the exam paper, you have to, uh, his son, Mr. Ahmed Ibrahim, he is waiting you to discuss the condition of his father and assume that he has a consent from his father to discuss the condition with you. Let us now to tell the introduction. Good morning, Mr. Ahmed Ibrahim. I am Dr. Ahmed Maher, Senior House Officer in the Emergency Department. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Doctor. Uh, uh, before starting the discussion about your father, I believe that you have a consent from your father to discuss the condition, his condition with me. I'm right? Yes, doctor, you are right. We are going today to discuss the result of imaging that request for your father. Is that okay for you? Yes, doctor. Do you want anyone of your family to attend this meeting with us? No, doctor, go on. This is a simple introduction. Good morning. I am Dr. Ahmed, Senior House Officer of Emergency Department. Greet the patient. I introduce myself. Are you Mr. Ahmed Ibrahim, the son of Mr. Ibrahim? Yes, doctor. This identify your patient. Confirm the agenda. Before confirming the agenda, you have to ask him. I believe that you have a consent from your father to discuss the condition with me. Uh, that's right. Yes, doctor. Confirm the agenda. We are going to discuss the result of the imaging has been done for your father. Is that okay? Yes. It is breaking bad news. So that doctor, uh, do you want in, in one of your family to attend this meeting? This is introduction. If introduction, we have six items. We have to cover it. If no breaking bad news, don't offer for him to any relative to attend the meeting with him. If you are if you are if you discuss the condition with patient, so that no no need to tell him do you have a consent or not because you are go, you are discussing with the patient. This is introduction. Task. First, don't allow to the patient by his attitude to distract you about the protocol of communication in this part. Sometimes we face angry patient. And once you start the scenario, the patient 
shouting and he as he has angry he is angry and he distract you about the pathway please don't allow for him to do that let the patient to speak and don't interrupt him you have to listen carefully with non verbal clue by hitting your head just making a sound during the patient speak mm, like that it is non verbal clue and is listening for the patient and one of the communication skill we have some questions to ask the patient about that once you finished your discussion as usual in your clinic if the patient come to see the result of investigation or relative come to you to ask about his father or his mother what is the first question for him how do you feel now this is the first question how do you feel now you have to start your communication after introduction for the patient mr ali how do you feel now if if you are discussing with the relative please could you tell me how is your father now it is very important to make a rapport with the patient it is a two way of discussion this communication let the patient to speak and reply to him in sympathy and embassy manner if the patient told you doctor i still feel pain i have shorts of breast and loss weight you have to reply i am sorry for that it is sympathy and embassy for the patient you have to make this way in your discussion with the patient don't listen only you have non verbal clue and the verbal clue don't interrupt but it's just a matter of sympathy first question how do you feel now second question how much you know about your illness it is a very very important question because the patient will tell him how much he is thinking patient has just been when you told him how do you feel now he mentioned for you i have been when you asked him how much you know about your illness he told you that when i came to emergency room i have this pain but after that he make a tracing for my heart like it is ecg but we are speaking now on medical term tracing to my heart and i feel better i feel a little bit better so that first question how do you feel now second one how much you know about your illness third one do you know why we requested this investigation for you it is very important to know what is inside the mind of the patient last one what does you what do you expect about the result of investigation to know also what inside his mind i expect that doctor it is a simple chest pain because i have cough long time ago and the travel abroad so that may be some bug in it is, could be bug inside the chest he doesn't aware about pulmonary embolism at all and the diagnosis was a pulmonary embolism so now before start the discussion we have to ask the patient or relative how do you feel now or how is your father feel now how much you know about your illness how much you know about your father illness do you know why we requested this investigation for you or do you know why we requested this investigation for your father what do you expect about this uh, the result of investigation this is the four questions sometimes when you go to exam and patient was diagnosed as tuberculosis and he was isolated in the room but no one told him why he isolated inside this room so that when you ask the patient how do you feel now he will reply i still have fever doctor i have weight loss and i don't know why you put me inside this room and all person caring uh, dealing with me wearing gloves and no any contact and not allowed for me to go out without mask no one informed me about that this patient is angry maybe the patient will distract you about this protocol so that you have to keep calm and reply in sympathy i am sorry for that 
I will tell you everything. I am here to help you. Then start to ask him to tell, tell the patient, could you tell me how much you know about your illness? He will tell you, I admitted inside the hospital and told me there is bug in the chest, but no one explained to me more about that. I am sorry for that. I will tell you everything about your condition. What do you know why we put you inside this room? No, doctor. Yes. The, what about your expectation about the result of your, your problem? I expect it could be simple bug in the chest. Then start after that the protocol for each case will, for each case will speak. So this is your start. The first impression for the examiner is this area. Ask the patient how do you feel now? Let him to speak freely and reply. Ask the patient how much you know about your illness. Ask the patient uh, what do you expect about the result of investigation. Now it's your role. Explain the main task that given to you according to your scenario. And the main task is different in the best way. So that we'll speak in each task later. But put in your mind you are a leader of the interview. So control the interview through a professional manner. Don't rush by speak too much. You have to speak clearly, simple, and put in your mind communication station is two way of discussion. Don't speak more than two minutes without interruption by the patient. If you, if, you are, if you are going to speak more than two minutes and no interruption for the patient, you have to stop yourself and tell the patient, are you with me? Are you following me? Is that clear for you? Or do you want from me to repeat everything for you, anything for you? To make interruption, to give attention for the examiner, you are not giving a lesson for the patient. It is not a lecture for the patient. It is a two-way discussion. So if you, your task, sometimes, some tasks need to, more speaking and the patient is listening to you. Three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. It is not communication. It is a lesson for the patient. So that after two minutes, stop yourself, tell the patient, if, are you with me? Are you following me? Any question, sometimes also asking, is that clear for you? Do you want from me to repeat anything to make interruption? Yourself. Again, check communication and the medical and the legal and the ethical issue to discuss here. After finish the main task, patient could be asking you some questions. Okay, no problem. We'll discuss this later. You have to ask about the concern direct question. Do you have any concern? It is a direct question. Do you have any concern? Actually, the patient has paper written it two or three questions. When you underwritten that concern, underwritten one or two questions. So that the patient will tell you his concern. Please. Please, again. Don't forget this. Once the patient asked you or tell you the concern, you have to answer it. And the answer of the concern it is a vital. Because some candidate it is escaping from the answer. When the patient asks you, doctor, this disease is curable or not? Some, be, some candidate tell, it could be curable, it could be non-curable. No, you have to give you answer according to your clinical knowledge and information. If the cancer and the metastasis, you tell him, I am sorry to inform you that this disease, it is not in the lung only, it is spread also to other organ, and in no surgery for this disease. I am sorry to inform you, it is only palliative treatment. That is mean we control your symptoms, so that your answer should be clearly and your answer should be accurate. Again, once you ask it about concern, after finish the main task, you have un to answer the concern. Concern is the most important skill in the exam. Why? We have concern in station two in history, station four communication, and 
two cases in the station five. Concern is about 16 marks. 16 marks. In each station, four marks. Four marks in history, four in communication, four in the first case in of clinical, uh, first case in station five, and second case in station five, also four marks. If you lost two concern or two stations concern, you will not fail, not pass the exam. So concern is a most important skill. You have to manage it in the right way and to answer it clearly. Now, with, we mentioned introduction. Main task, concern, then end of discussion. End of discussion, it is very, very important because a lot of candidates forget it. And during our lecture today, I mentioned that check understanding in the managed patient concern scale. It is written in the, uh, in the mark sheet. End of discussion. Number one, you have to summarize the discussion and emphasize about important notes by saying to the patient, I will summarize now the important notes in this discussion. Don't give more time for summary, just to highlight the important note. Don't repeat the discussion again. You are in this area, you have to tell, we are going to tell the examiner about that we make summary not more than this, so that you take only some few seconds, not more than 30 seconds. I am going to summarize for you most important issue today. Um, you were admitted uh, to the hospital by chest pain, and we make tracing of your heart and imaging in your lung, and uh, I am sorry to say to you, you, we found that blood clot inside the blood conduit of your lung, and as I told you, we'll admit you to the hospital and we'll give you medication. This medication will make thinning of the blood and we'll admit you until we reach the, your blood thinning to the therapeutic range and you will discharge after that and follow up in outpatient clinic regularly. This is the summary, not more than this. Second, we'll tell the patient, I appreciate we have covered a lot of issues today. Is there anything you would like from me to repeat it again or to go over again? The patient will reply, no, actually. Check understanding is very important. You will tell the patient, I hope our discussion is useful for you. Can you tell me how much you get information from me? The patient will tell you about the issue he wants our issue he understand it, understood it during the discussion. So that it is very, very important to check understanding for the patient. Number four, help. You have to over help to the patient like this websites and leaflet, brochure and videos about your condition, about pulmonary embolism. You have to read it. And if you have any question or any inquiries about this, your problem, this is my contact number. You can contact me at any time. It is a help. Again, this is a standard. We each case, we have to do that. Each case. But in case of this, don't mention the patient. I will give you a website or brochure about this. It is not practical. Okay? Or number four, help. Number five, we'll tell the patient, I hope... You have found our discussion useful to you. Do you have any further question or concern? It is one of the important question here. I hope you have found our discussion useful to you. Do you have any further question or concern? Maybe sometimes there's a hidden concern you didn't discuss and the patient wait to repeat it, for, repeat it again for him. So that it is very important to ask and repeat again for the patient. Do you have in another concern? Then thank you all for the patient and she can't. So, end of discussion, we have six items. Number one, 
summarize. Number two, ask the patient if he want anything to repeat it for him again. Number three, it is check understanding. Number four, help. Number five, do you have any other concern? Number six, thanks and check hands with the patient. Now we reach to end of scenario during exam or your preparation. What can I do during one minute for reflection? So that we will wait one minute before discussion with examiner or your colleague during your preparation. Don't consume this minute in blaming yourself if you missed an item, but put in your mind it is overall satisfaction. One item will not affect you at all. Don't blame yourself if you forget an item during discussion with the patient, it is overall satisfaction. You have to make rapid interpretation of your case and emphasize again about ethical, legal, medical, social, and the public issue as I mentioned before. Be sure, again, be sure, all questions with the examiner, you already faced it during your preparation in our course, so that feel confident at all. We did a lot of cases during preparation and it is repeated cases. So be sure all questions, he will ask you medical items about your case or some ethical and legal issue. Be sure and be confident you will answer this question inshallah. inshallah. So that make proper plan and the proper practice will make all this stage is too simple. As I mentioned before in my introduction, you will do it but your subconscious mind. So that is don't, fe don't feel that it's too hard. It is uh, too simple. If you do it regularly, it will be a habit. Please, again, do it simply and your way of Preparation will determine your way of pass of the exam. Feel confident about your preparation and your exam will go simply and no need for hesitation. Again, this is a simple preparation for communication. And also, I would like to say in the next presentation or lecture, I will speak about each case separately. We have now, we have now introduction, it is the same. End of discussion, it is the same. First part of the main task, it is the same. So, in this meeting or in this lecture, about 40% of communication of skills, we discuss that. In next lecture, I will speak in details about how to break bad news, how to handle angry patient, how to go through the explanation of chronic illness, how to explain the procedure, what is the criteria of consent, and what is the criteria of post-mortem examination, I hope that, I hope all of this will be simple for our candidate and see you in to speak about it soon and again thank you for Dr. Khatib about his effort and see you inshallah in the future. Thank you.